Hello everyone and welcome to this ultimate guide for Venusaur. Venusaur is one of the first Pokemon you unlock in the game. At level 5 you get this Pokemon for free and it's one of the best Pokemon in Unite right now. In this guide I'm going to talk to you about its build, the best held items, good emblem sets for this Pokemon. I'm going to show you how all the moves work and we're going to see matches with two of the most common Venusaur builds. Before I bring you in here and break down all the amazing things that Venusaur does and maybe if few things that you don't even know about yet, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is Southern New Hampshire University. Do you feel like a lack of experience is holding you back from pursuing the career you want? Yes. Oh, I wasn't even talking to you. Okay, so it's holding you back? Yes, it is. Well, then you're going to want to hear about today's sponsor. SNHU has one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree offerings in the country. They feature over 200 degree programs getting you started or continuing in a career that you will love. Do they have more than 201? I would assume so, yes. More than 202? When I first started content creation without question one of the most difficult things oh you're just ignoring me now was the fact that i had almost zero experience in this field and it took a long time for me to even understand how to record this video if you're interested in content creation like me one program that you might love is snhu's social media marketing degree in this program you'll learn how to leverage social media to engage customers build loyalty and drive business this is a great program if you want to be a content creator community manager or social media strategist all of snhu's programs are extremely flexible. There are no set class times allowing you to work when and where you want. What if I want to work on the beach? Yeah, anywhere you want. What about on a pier? Again, that's fine. I don't think they care. I can tell you that with everything I do, I wish I had all of the information I had now a long, long time ago and probably given to me by experts because it would have helped out a ton when I first started doing all of this. So if you're ready to switch to a career that you'll love, I am. SNHU can help. Head on over to snhu.edu edu slash spraggles. There's also a link in my description to learn more. Go there today. Just go. Okay, I'm going right now. Oh, actually, I don't know if you can click the link. Oh, no? Well, you're me and I'm you and this is all a we're the same. And then if you click, I don't know if they count us. Right. You don't understand, do you? No, I'm currently clicking the link. Big shout out to SNHU. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Let's talk about our little Bulbasaur here. So when you start as Bulbasaur, you have a choice between two moves, Razor Leaf and Seed Bomb. Both of these moves are fine for their own reasons. I think Razor Leaf is the superior choice, but you get them at levels one and three. So you get both moves. Let's talk about Razor Leaf here. Razor Leaf is a line attack here that you do in any direction that you so choose. And it's consistent damage, 10 ticks of damage, I believe, over for about a second, a little under a second, according to Unite DB. And you do decent amounts to enemies, and you end up doing a ton of little pockets of damage. The nice thing about this is sometimes you can secure wild Pokemon with it. The disadvantage here is it's not a huge burst of damage. So actually, Venusaur has a better secure move oftentimes, and that is its boosted attack. We'll talk about that here in a moment. Your other move is Seed Bomb. Seed Bomb, you can fire anywhere inside this range. It does a little bit of damage. In general, I think Seed Bomb is kind of not very good, but, you know, when you're fighting, throw an extra Seed Bomb, do a little extra damage to the enemies there. It's not really your secure move. Your secure move is either Razor Leaf or your boosted attack. Let's talk about your boosted here. So your basic attacks are pretty weak, but on your third attack here, you get this big boosted, and these two vines jump out from Venusaur and do a lot of damage, actually. So I think this is actually your best secure move. It's easy to use, it's easy to charge up, and you do a huge chunk of damage with it here. So rather than using Razor Leaf, when a Pokemon is contested between you and the enemies, I think the best thing you can do is wait for it to get low and then at the last moment, try to hit it there with your boosted. I wouldn't say that Razor Leaf is terrible for it, but again, it's small little chips of damage rather than one big burst of damage. Let's talk about Sludge Bomb here first. Once you become Ivysaur, you get a choice between Giga Drain and Sludge Bomb. These are kind of setting up two different builds for you. In fact, even in the Solar Beam build, a lot of people still take Giga Drain, but I think Sludge Bomb, after some recent buffs, is actually doing pretty nice. Sludge Bomb creates a little area of poison here that you 
throw out. It does damage to enemies inside of it, and it also slows. It slows on the first hit, and it slows consistently inside this little ring of damage. Not only does it slow, it also decreases enemies' special defense. So the idea behind Sludge Bomb is that it combos very well with Solar Beam, or really any move that you're going to throw out there. You can see I'm doing a little extra damage to Regilecki when I hit it there with Sludge Bomb, and then my Razor Leaf. My Razor Leaf normally is only doing 84 for each tick, and if I'm throwing out this sludge bomb right here, you were seeing it was doing 92 for each tick of damage. I actually think this situation is really not good for my little Venusaur right here. I'm not paying enough attention to this practice match, but I gotta push this Reggie back. So, sludge bomb. Consistent damage over time and consistent slows. It seems to combo really well with Solar Beam. I think pairing it with Petal Dance is a bit of a troll, to be honest with you here. So, if you're going Solar Beam, you're either gonna run Solar Beam Sludge Bomb or Solar Beam Giga Drain. Let's talk about Solar Beam while we have it. A huge range on it right here, and it does a ton of damage. It does 10 separate ticks of damage, five of which are based on enemy max HP, and five of which are based on sliders and values, and all that kind of information can be found on a website like Unite DB. I'll have a link to it in my description here. But the nice thing about Solar Beam is it's just massive damage at incredible range. It's so good for securing KOs on wild Pokemon, last hits on enemy objectives, objectives and of course just ripping through the enemy team here and if you hit with something like sludge bomb first you're actually able to do more damage with it because the enemy's special defense is lowered not only that sludge bomb given that it slows enemies it makes it a little easier sometimes to land those big solar beams solar beam is incredible it does crazy good damage the only thing that kind of beats it maybe is Mew's solar beam a little bit I actually don't know if it beats it in damage anymore, but Mew does get it at level one. So, I mean, come on here. At level nine, you evolve. You become Venusaur. You also get some cooldown reduction. You get your Unite move. And we will talk about your Unite move here in a moment because it's very good. At level 11, you get Sludge Bomb Plus, And then at level 13, you get Solar Beam Plus. Venusaur has a huge power spike at level 13. Not only do you get your upgraded moves, you also get additional cooldown reduction. So let's talk about Sludge Bomb Plus. As you can see, the radius for this move is increased. It just makes it so much easier to hit multiple enemies with it. Do extra damage and at the same time lower special defense of many Pokemon on the map. Also, given that you have this really nice cooldown reduction that you get just for being a level 13 Venusaur, you get to fire your sludge bombs a ton once you hit level 13. Again, this move upgrades at level 11. No matter which move set you're going with, Venusaur has this huge breakpoint at level 13. Again, massive amounts of cooldown reduction and your big move here gets its upgrade. So Solar Beam gets it's a cool down reduction at level 13, meaning that you can fire this move a ton. It's literally on a six second cooldown. It's pretty crazy. Now take that combo with cooldown reduction items, black green emblems, combo that with uh, a blue buff, and all of a sudden you're firing solar beams so often. It's just really incredible. And it lets you use your moves a ton in fights right here. As you can see, with a blue buff, you're on a, under a five second cooldown with this, and I don't even believe I have all the cooldown items currently on Venusaur. So you get to really use your moves a lot, which is huge with a move like Solar Beam, where you kind of have to be a little more careful throughout the match when you can use it. Later into the game at level 13, you kind of get to spam it a ton. This is probably what would be considered the most common Solar Beam build right here. Uh, Sludge Bomb, Solar Beam. I think a lot of people also do play Giga Drain Solar Beam, which is really good because Giga Drain is amazing. You'll see a video later in this, a match of me playing Solar Beam Sludge Bomb. All right, we've talked about Sludge Bomb and Solar Beam. Let's talk about Giga Drain. So Giga Drain is a really cool move. It has an area sort of cone in front of you that does damage to enemies, and it also heals Venusaur for all every single Pokemon hit, wild Pokemon or enemy Pokemon. So this is an amazing self heal for Venusaur. And it also has this really cool effect here. You also take reduced damage when you hit with this here. So I'm getting hit by Snorlax right here. Come here, buddy. I want you to hit me so I can 
please, please. There we go. Hitting me for 805, 325. After I heal, it's hitting me 112, 211 here. So you have a 35% damage reduction for a moment when you heal with Giga Drain. This is just another reason this move is so incredible is because it reduces the amount of damage you take. See, I'm taking 70s right here. 110, 110, 113, 113. I heal again, 70, 70. As you can see, huge damage reduction when you hit with Giga Drain and you are healing yourself. Giga Drain is just crazy. It's crazy good. And that's why you see people run it even with Solar Beam because it just provides so much value. Healing for every single enemy hit and a huge chunk of damage reduction. Now at level seven, you get Petal Dance. Petal Dance is an incredible move. Not only does it give you insane movement speed, not only does it hit enemies uh, for little ticks, around you the entire time so you secure some things just in some crazy moments it also reduces the cooldown of your other move that would either be giga drain or even sludge bomb if you were running that build basically every time you hit an enemy pokemon not a wild pokemon with the pedal dance you see a reduction in your cooldown as you can see giga drain is up and every time it's hitting it's chunking down the cooldown of my move there's an exact percentage let me check unite db here just so i can tell you exactly what it is the reduction of your other moves cooldown down is by 30% for every single tick that hits and hitting multiple enemies reduces it more so it's just incredible 30% of the remaining time it's just you giga drain and you pedal dance and then boom it's right back it's yeah it's it's crazy. And of course, like I mentioned before, huge speed boost increase when you use Pedal Dance. It starts at 90% and then it tapers off as the move goes, but it's just an incredible way to catch up with enemies, run away from a situation, reposition yourself in a fight. Pedal Dance Giga Drain is the Venusaur build that you see people playing. Now let's talk about your two upgrades. Giga Drain Plus increases the healing, which is just amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. At level 11, you get increased healing on Giga Drain, which is awesome. Pedal Dance, however, at level 13, just makes it so it's almost impossible not to reset your Giga Drains constantly. Your range for Pedal Dance gets bigger. Not only that, with the cooldown reduction you just get from being a level 13 Venusaur, your Pedal Dance is almost up an infinite amount of times. It's just insane you're constantly under pedal dance and you're constantly able to giga drain with this setup it's unbelievable the increased range here just means that every single enemy on the enemy team is getting hit your giga drains are coming up often faster than you can even use them with this build so again the way it works is you hit with a giga drain and you start to chunk down the cooldown with pedal dance right here they count that substitute doll so you can literally just continue to use giga drain the whole time pedal dance comes back up and this is what you see Venusaurs doing near the end of the game where they're just absolutely running through an entire enemy team. It's because they just keep healing. They can't be KO'd. Their Giga Drain just keeps coming up. It gives them a damage reduction and healing. It's just insane. Let's talk Unite move and passive. Venusaur's passive is Overgrow. Once Venusaur is under 30% health, you'll see this little leaf pop up there and that lets you know that your passive is up. As soon as that pops up, you are doing 20% more damage with Venusaur. It's a really nice little bonus that you get for this Pokemon. It doesn't affect the amount of healing you do, but it does affect the amount of damage that you do. So this is why you see Venusaur get low in a fight and then fight its way all the way back and seemingly do more damage to KO enemies. It's because you actually are doing more damage. Under 30% health, that little leaf pops up and you are actually dealing more damage to enemies during that time. On your Petal Dance, your Giga Drain, your Unite move, everything. And that's why a healing build on this Pokemon is so incredibly good. Now let's talk finally about the Unite move, Verdant Anger. It has a huge range to it, and wherever you throw it, you're gonna deal some pretty massive damage. You're also going to slow enemies, and then you are going to have a burst out and deal secondary damage around it right here. As you can see, it lands and then bursts out and deals damage all around it here. I'm gonna turn off my cooldowns just so it's a a little easier to spam this move so everybody can see it you land it deals damage slows the enemy and deals damage around them you can actually deal kind of damage to enemies twice depending on how you land with it if you kind of hit them on part of it you can hit them with one piece of damage but also oftentimes you just throw this into a big you know group of enemies and do a ton of damage one move that you can do with this too is throw it kind of right on yourself when you're fighting and it's just hitting everyone around you you're going to continue to fight 
get HP back with your Giga Drain, Pedal Dance, you know, etc. It's pretty incredible here for really any fight Venusaur needs to do. A lot of times this move used to be used for sort of sniping objectives and things like that. And while that's totally possible, I think it's much, much better for fighting. The enemy team groups up and it's going to be hard not to at least do a decent amount of damage to all of those enemies. It's also worth mentioning that when Venusaur uses its Unite move, it gets a move speed increase, a cooldown increase, and a max shield equal to 20% of your HP. So again, I think it's ideal to use this in a fight so that you can spam your moves more often rather than waiting to use this for some type of sniper activity, trying to steal Rayquaza or something like that. Use it to kind of get in there and really start doing some damage. You're fighting the enemy, boom, Unite move comes out. They didn't expect that. And now you continue going with crazy, crazy cooldowns doing insane damage. All right, held items for Venusaur. I'm gonna go through all the held items, the ones I like the most and the ones that are pretty viable for this Pokemon. Energy Amplifier is really good for this Pokemon because you use your Unite move and then again you continue to fight either with Solar Beam or even with Petal Dance and Giga Drain. You're just continuing to fight and deal tons of damage to enemies. This gives you that big boost of increased damage for a little while so I actually think this is one of the better options on this Pokemon. It also gives you cooldown reduction. Muscle Band is pretty amazing on Venusaur. It does increase your attack speed if you're using a level 30 Muscle Band so for a lot of the game you actually get a nice little attack speed increase but not only that with Venusaur you are constantly attacking at range the attack doesn't really help you the attack speed is fine but not the biggest thing the biggest thing is the extra damage you do all the time because of muscle bands passive when basic attacks hit the damage is increased by 3% of the opposing Pokemon's remaining HP. And when you're doing basic attacks a lot at range, this damage can really stack up. Buddy Barrier is very good for this Pokemon. Its Unite move isn't on the worst cooldown ever, and oftentimes, especially if you're Giga Drain Petal Dance build, you're using the Unite move and continuing to fight. So you get a shield, an ally gets a shield, you get your Unite moves, current shield, so it just lets you stay alive a lot longer inside of a fight. Buddy Barrier, always a pretty good item on pretty much any Pokemon. Here are a few other items that I think are pretty solid. Shell Bell, it gives you a nice little cooldown reduction. It ups your special attack, which isn't the hugest thing on Venusaur, but it does give you a healing based on your special attack every eight, 10 seconds, something like that. I'm blanking on the exact internal cooldown of Shell Bell, but this is kind of cool when you're running it with the Petal Dance Giga Drain build. The cooldown is nice, and again, that extra healing can be pretty fun. You're probably gonna get more value out of your next item here, Focus Band. This is the item that increases uh, your HP at a rapid rate when your HP gets low once every 80 seconds or something like that inside of a match. So this paired with a Petal Dance Giga Drain build just means it's a lot harder to KO you. Even when your health starts to get low, not only is your Giga Drain giving you health back, but also this Focus Band is keeping you alive. It's a pretty great combo. And then choice specs. Venusaur actually has pretty dang good special attack. Its moves just don't scale particularly well off that. I have other videos that kind of talk about scaling more, but just know that the more special attack you give Venusaur, it doesn't really equate to a ton of extra damage, but the way choice specs works is that your special attack is going to give you an extra pop of damage on an internal cooldown, which I believe is about eight seconds on this item as well. This internal cooldown is going to just give extra chips of damage. So whether you're using Solar Beam, Sludge Bomb, Giga Drain, Petal Dance, you're hitting with moves all the time. So this just gives extra chunks of damage all the time with your special attacks. Here, a look at some items I don't think are very good on Venusaur, but every once in a while, I hear people talk about them. Wise glasses, weakness policy, scope lens. Wise glasses, it does increase your special attack, but again, Venusaur doesn't really benefit that much from more special attack. Weakness policy is an attack-based item, so even though, yes, you're in combat a lot, this increases your attack stat, which isn't really that big at all for Venusaur. If special attack isn't that big, attack really doesn't do anything at all. And then scope lens, you don't really get a ton out of critically hitting on this Pokemon. You do a lot more with your moves than you do just with your basic attacks critting so any crit item isn't the greatest i actually could see more of an argument for razor claw than i could with something like scope lens just because razor claw is going to give you an extra pop of damage after you use a move you use a move a lot if you're going pedal dance giga drain but again i don't think you need to worry about critical hits at all with this pokemon defensively also i don't think you really need to do much with any of these rocky helm just doesn't really work well as an item score shield isn't that necessary for venusaur 
before. I think there is an interesting use case for Aos Cookie if you can get your stacks. Whenever you're running a build that gives you a ton of health regeneration, having a larger max HP pool isn't bad, but I don't think any of these items are super ideal on this Pokemon. For a lot of beginners, I think a build like this is super easy. Muscle Band, Focus Band, Buddy Barrier. You're going to get extra value every time you unite, and you have this to heal you. Muscle Band, you just do extra damage whenever you're pressing the A button, basically. So this is a solid beginner build for Venusaur that I like a lot. I'm going to have a more detailed guide with boost emblems on my channel here very, very soon. But on a lot of Pokemon like this, I just like running seven black, six green, and then any variation inside there. I think there might be a stronger combination of emblems, but this is what I'm running on Venusaur right now. Seven black for the cooldown reduction, six green so that you're able to get that extra special attack damage, and then whatever else you can get in there. I'm using Mewtwo for a little extra cooldown reduction, but it doesn't seem to be super beneficial. But anything seven black, six green, I think is a very solid choice for Venusaur. All right, let's take you into these matches. All right, this will be for the Solar Beam Venusaur build. We're going to do Energy Amp, Muscle Band, and Choice Specs. Again, with this, you know, you just get extra damage out of those Choice Specs with our Sludge Bomb and with our Solar Beam. And then hopefully we can line up some pretty cool Unite moves and do some crazy damage with our Energy Amp. Muscle Band, of course, because we're using our ranged attacks all the time. So we're going to be getting extra damage there as well. All right, here we go, heading to the top path. We're gonna take Razor Leaf first, and the nice thing about Venusaur is you're always doing damage with your moves, so you actually do get a decent amount of value out of your choice specs, especially when you're hitting constantly with uh, this build here. You wanna hit that? There you go, buddy. Yeah, we both get level three. Perfect. And unfortunately, you're not stacking or anything like that, so you're kind of just competing for farm against your enemies here. It's a little hard to beat back someone who's trying to stack, but we're going to do our best job here. Oh, actually, we didn't do too bad, it looks like. Ooh, nice little push there from you. I like that play. Hopefully, we can grab this before the enemy does. Yes, we're going to be able to get this one. Almost got that one as well. Hard to out-secure a Mew. It starts with Solar Beam, but we're doing our best job here. And I'd like my uh, Eldegoss to get level 4 here. So I'm going to let them have this little back, uh, back uh, clay doll there. Oops. And we are getting attacked early here by Gengar. They're coming in. We just have to back up here. There's not a ton we can do. We're getting jungled and they're stronger than us. So we just have to back up, try to play this patiently, get as much experience as we can. If we can get any, we actually were able to grab that. And then just watch out as best we can for these huge you know, chunks of damage, these big uh, Dream Eaters that Gengar's throwing at us. And just continue to farm and get our levels here. That's all we can really do in a moment like this. When you're getting you know, uh, jungled and the enemy is coming to your lane, the best thing you can do is just get as much as you can and stay safe, stay alive. Try not to lose your goal over it, if at all possible. Mew now has level five, so it can switch its moves up. It's gonna be really hard to out-secure this Pokemon again, but we're just gonna do our best. Any little piece of farm that we can get. Got our Sludge Bomb now, which is gonna help us here. Stole that one, nice. They didn't expect me to throw my damage right there, so that worked out pretty good. Wasn't able to make it middle in time for the eights, just dealing with what's happening here top. And it looks like the enemy's moving around right now, so we just have to be careful right here. This is a, a spot where we could easily get picked off. Char's here. Gengar's here top. They're going to end up breaking this. We have not gotten the jungle on our side yet. So unfortunately, there isn't a ton we can do in this path, but we're going to get all the experience we can. Try to get our level seven so that we can get our solar beam. Oof. Huge boosted and solar beam right there from the enemy. Gengar coming in here, trying to see if they can get some damage done. We might actually be able to take out some of the top path if our Gengar can can put the hurt on the enemy a little bit. Looks like we've got a Hex on our side, which will actually be pretty cool because we have Sludge Bomb, so. Ooh, got caught. Got caught there. Unfortunate. Our Gengar is left path, so that lane is just gone. But the silver lining here is that we're going to get our level 7 right now. Nothing we can really do if nobody rotates to our path. We're just going to lose it, so it happens. But we do get our Solar Beam. And now we're going to take as much XP as we can. 
Just grab all the experience that we can get our hands on here. So we can get our Unite move. And as quickly as we can get our level 13. Ooh, nice. We're going to get our Tyranitar here too. So there's our Titar. The enemy is not yet hitting the objective. Looks like they're able to take us out there. We actually do get Reggie Ice in the bottom path. That was a huge uh, Sludge Bomb Solar Beam. We didn't get to see the damage there, but I hit. I think I hit all three of them with that. That worked out pretty great for us. Gengar is here. It missed me. Another huge Solar Beam right there. Not enough to take them all down, but these are big, big Solar Beams we're getting, so a lot of damage here. Unfortunately, we just don't have a super strong front line, but we're doing as much as we can, as much damage as we can to the enemy. We're really close to our level 9, and I'm actually not going to run back immediately. I'm going to take this experience and get my level 9 so that I have a Unite move when I get back there. The Unite move here is really huge because we have our Energy Amp. So my plan is throw our Unite, hopefully hit with a little bit of a... Sludge Bomb, Solar Beam combo as well. Ooh, Gengar's here. It's not going to be too bad for us. Char is going to take us into the sky. Here comes the Unite. Here comes the Solar Beam. Nice, got a double KO there. Nice, should be a triple. Beautiful. So that was the combination of my Unite, my Sludge Bomb, and my Solar Beam all kind of popping off at the same time. So that's why I didn't run back immediately. I waited, I got some experience so that I could eventually fight that fight a little bit better for the team. And as best I can, I just need my level 13 now because as soon as I get that, I will be able to uh, fire my solar beams kind of at will basically, right on the same timer essentially as Sludge Bomb. So you can just combo a lot more with it. And of course, every piece of wild experience you get um, every last hit you get here charges up your Unite move, so I'll be able to fight with a Unite again here at this bottom path. I'm going to walk down here. Got my Unite. Blue buff is really nice for me, getting that extra cooldown reduction, so I'm going to try to grab this on my way down. Gengar's here with a Unite. I have to back up a little bit. Nice. Mm, this actually isn't a bad place to unite the enemy here, if I can get a nice little spread on where they are. Gengar's going down here. Everyone's kind of gone. No no real good unite there. I could have thrown it a little earlier, but the enemy team actually just went down to our squad here. The nice thing is, we're a pretty late game team, you know. Uh, Hoopa's pretty good early, but Tyranitar... Uh, Solar Beam, I would say. Solar Beamasaur is not that good early. It's really, you know, it's good later into the match. Gengar as well, depending on how they're playing it. They, they're usually pretty good at level 5 or so, but... I have an opportunity to Unite here, um, but it has to be, like, right now. And I don't know if it's going to pop up really. And I don't want to not have it for our big fight, so... I think I'm just going to go ahead and hold it. If there was a good shot in that bottom path, we would have been able to unite there. And my level 13 is coming up, which is huge. That means I get cooldown reduction on my solar beams, which is just incredible. We're going to hit this. Send it to the enemy here. Nice. Scissor not able to stop it. And we're kind of moving as a unit here, as a team, which is really nice. Just kind of a big sort of death ball towards the enemies. So Gengar's in trouble. Mew is just going to solar beam us like crazy. And I'm just going to throw sludge bombs and solar beams. Oops, that was a bit of a snap back there. And we actually do get that in. Uh, we should let somebody with a 50 score it. And just take their experience right now. We're ahead. So we're in an interesting spot. Whenever you're ahead, you're always in an interesting spot coming into this final fight. Because you don't need to win uh, any of the goals anymore. But you do want to not all get KO'd and lose this fight. That's kind of the big thought. Let me see if I can get this blue buff. Hit Gengar there. It's able to score. And it almost gets me. Scissor's going to get me here, I think. It's chasing me pretty hard. 
Yeah, it grabs me. That's okay. Two of them are down, and I'm I'm sort of a, a big sitting duck, right? I'm just the artillery Pokemon throwing damage out there, so it's not surprising to me that they'd want to try to get me. Gengar kind of going in against this Charizard alone, unfortunately not able to do too much. Our team needs to be careful here and not get caught out. Because they're... Oof. They're, they're, they're actually charging at the enemy. I think this is probably not the play, honestly. But if they pick up some good KOs, it'll work out. The truth is we're ahead, so we need to play a little more defensively than the enemy does. If we're just if we're in there, like we, we're just we're way too deep right now. I've got a big unite move here. There it goes. I'm gonna combo that with my solar beam. Nice. We get a couple. And right now we're in a pretty good spot. We got 30 seconds left. The enemy's not able to beat us. Uh, easily by winning this fight here but what they can do is they can peel off and score so we got 20 seconds left there really isn't a good opportunity to win through taking Rayquaza there's just not enough time but they could win through scoring so I'm gonna back up here and watch one of these goals hopefully my T-Tar goes top yes he did and that should be the game. There really isn't a way for them to beat us right here. A little bit of an anticlimactic finish, but what we're trying to do in that moment is just win the game, you know, by fighting at Rayquaza, not letting them have it. And then as time is dwindling down, there's just not enough they can do to come back there. We know we're ahead on score because we've broken more goals and they didn't get a big overcap in that bottom path. So there you go. A little solar beamasaur for you. We probably did some okay damage. 74k. A little light, but we didn't even have a big fight near the end there. Normally, what you'll find is you'll have kind of a big team fight at Rayquaza. You throw your Unite move, a couple solar beams, but really solid game. And you just saw us right there spending our time making sure that the enemy couldn't win at the end rather than trying to push and get KO'd. Because if all of us get KO'd in that final fight, they can just turn, take Rayquaza really quick, and then start scoring. All right, Solar Beamasaur. Okay, gonna take something a little different into this one. I'm gonna take Energy Amp, Shell Belt, Focus Band. I also think that you could run something like Muscle Band in place of the Shell Bell, Buddy Barrier, things like that, but Shell Bell's pretty fun. I don't wanna mess around with it here. Heading to the top path here. I wanted to go bottom for this one, but we're heading top. I actually recorded an entire Giga Drain game, but I didn't record my microphone audio, so here's Giga Drain game number two. Let's go. All right. We don't have the opportunity to stack. So as we're moving forward here, we're going to look to get this if we can. Looks like we're going to be able to get this. I don't know if my ally is going to be able to get out here no matter what I really do. I can try to throw some damage at them. That stun might have done it. Oh, it looks like I'll get Eldie here. Nope. No, I won't. Not with Buzzwool. Bummer. Close. But he got me with that big uh, Fell Stinger. A fully, fully powered up Fell Stinger. And that really did the trick. We'll be okay, though. It's just the start. Gonna make sure we're ready here. Try to get some of that. We got a lot of it, actually. Got a leech life on our hands. Okay. Leech life buzzwall. Not as scary as superpower buzzwall, in my opinion. But it could do some mean things to us. Luckily, it's going to want to fight us at point blank range. And that's what we're going to want to do as soon as we get our move set. Zoomerol walking up here. Possibly to help us. Let's see. Looks like we got a little bit of a fight happening. I'm gonna go ahead and score, full heal out. I'm gonna try to take this. I'm gonna try to walk center for the eight o'clock, the eight minute fight here. I'm, we might be a little late, but we might be just right on time. Nice. The faster you can clear this, the better. It could help me get my level 7, which would be really nice. 
Zoomerl now walking bottom. I'm gonna move through the center if they're not heading back to it. This will get me my level seven and uh, be huge for this squad. Really close here. I think I'm gonna take this back one as well. Well, I'm gonna be up here for 720. I'm gonna be slightly late, but I'm so close to my seven. Dang. Just have to walk back from this. I'm gonna get eaten up here. Got my pedal dance, which is huge. Basically, I just, you know, got my massive power spike here, so... Couldn't have happened at a better time. I really needed it. We've broken top goal. Mime is being zoned out pretty hard. So we secure that. That's gonna start walking. I'm really close to my level 9 here, which would get me a big Unite move for this first push. Not much I can do here. I'm just going to get KO'd, unfortunately. The rest of the team didn't push with this. We got Gardevoir or Garchomp down here. I'm not sure what Absol's doing. I don't know who he's fighting in the bottom path. I haven't really paid attention. Gardevoir, maybe? Huh. Okay. That was a moment we could all push together, but we just chose not to, it seems like. Got my uh, evolution here. So now I've got my Unite move. Are nice buffs for anybody. Blue is huge for me. Ooh, we got a good fight here. Right there. Ooh, dang. Got caught by Gardevoir. That could have been a really good fight for us. Unfortunately, caught by Guardi in that Unite move. We definitely output a lot of damage there. We just not we're not able to close anything out. Running top here. We should have center coming back up pretty soon. Ooh, mine. That's gonna break. And it gotta unite. Just gonna have to back off. We're gonna get all this XP. A lot of experience to grab here. It would be really smart if our team was kind of forming up at this point. Trying to get my Unite move back in time. It's gonna be close, but I don't think it's gonna happen. We got it like 93. Oh, okay. Just let him know my Unite move is like right here. There we go. Fine with me. I just want to make sure they can't get to it, and they don't. And now it gets to push at least a little bit. Even into that cram. Which we should get the KO on. Oh, Eldegoss is going to get me. <laughs> Almost. I'm going down here for sure. <laughs> Eldy with the Unite on me. Nice. Uh, my team, we have two bottom actually, grabbing that. They should break that bottom point, it feels like, huh? 40 to 37, that's pretty solid. That's walking. They're gonna stop it. All right, we're looking pretty good right now. I'm gonna get my blue buff again. I'm gonna try to get my level 13 as quick as I can. That gives me that massive pedal dance range. I actually have a Unite move poss oh, possibly here. 315's pretty late. Do we have a fight anywhere that's good? I don't think so. We've got a three minute spawn coming up for the Altaria right here. Now that we've got our level 13, we've just got this massive... Ooh, this is actually not too bad for us. So we're probably going down here. 
But, you know, it's a really, really late Unite for mine. Um, I don't think it's going to get it back in time. I'm not going to blow my Unite for it. So it's a really late Mime Unite. And we will have our Unite ready for either this top fight, if that ends up being the final fight, or Rayquaza. Mine will get it back pretty fast, but I don't know if I don't know if that's in time. We'll see. Running top. Looks like no one's ripping it here, which is fine. Absol's on it. Enemy's moving in here. That's not going down. We can peel back. Cram going down here. This is turning into the final fight right now. Nice. Ooh, Buzzwool with a nice KO. Garchomp looking pretty good here. Ooh, but Gardevoir actually doing well too. Garchomp needs to back. So we still have a Trevenant Unite. I think they still have a Gardevoir Unite. I don't know if I saw them use it or not. This is a pretty close fight right now. I'm trying to get mine here. Slightly missing that one. They're hitting Rayquaza. A lot of them in here, but that's good for me. The more I can hit with my Giga Drain, the better. I got two of them pushing in on me. This is getting low. We get it. Let's go. Just trying to bide my time so I can make it in and win. And we do. Wow. One heck of a fight. Gonna put 50 in the bottom here. Should be the game. 10 seconds left. Nice game there. chase down LD right there at the end. That was a good final fight. I liked that final fight a lot. That was really back and forth. They were definitely ripping, but they were ripping and trying to push me out the whole time because they knew that I could continue fighting. And the more of them that kept pushing in, the easier it was for me to Giga Drain and then steal tons of HP from the enemy team. So that was kind of my plan there as we were fighting in that final fight. Didn't get a ton of KOs this one, but we did 120,000 damage basically. So yeah. That's Venusaur for you, man. Giga Drain Pedal Dance. We even had some moments where we kind of had like a couple botched moments throughout the match. We still did 120k. Pedal Dance Giga Drain. Yeesh. Yeesh, yeesh, yeesh. I hope this guide was helpful. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. More ultimate guides coming soon. Let me know in the comments what other Pokemon you want to see me make a guide for next. Love you all. Mwah.